Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Now, it may be the end of the growing season on your farm, and if so, uh, there's still a chance for you to make more money. You may think, well, okay, you're going to talk about marketing today. Nope, we're going to talk about harvest loss, how to identify and solve the problem. We also want to talk about a soil test you can get that a lot of farmers don't get, and this could be the key to your success. We'll discuss it later in the show today. We've also got a tough to control weed of the week, but first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little bit about one of those products that, you know what, people are calling them biological products. Really all it is, is a natural product that exists in the environment. It's gibberellic acid, and there are many different product names out there. We'll specifically mention the product Rise Up Smart Grass, but it's gibberellic acid. What is it, what does it do, and why is it important in agriculture? Well, all right, right away you're like, gibberellic acid, this sounds kind of crazy. I don't know what, what it would actually do for me, but it's something that grass crops will naturally be producing. So when you look at a corn plant, for example, uh, it's, it's something that's inside a corn plant already that the root system will produce to help that plant elongate and grow above ground. Okay, so here's the whole thing. What researchers discovered years ago is that very early on in the season when it's cold or very late in the season when it's cold the plant isn't producing enough gibberellic acid to meet the needs of farmers and to get maximum production so basically what happens today is farmers that have grass crops let's say corn or wheat or especially pasture. You think about all the pasture acres there are in the United States. If a rancher could get, let's say, an extra couple weeks of good growth in the spring and an extra couple weeks of good growth in the fall, just think of how much more grass that would produce. What that basically means is the livestock then have a lot more grass to, to eat and we're gonna have a lot more productive livestock. We're going to produce more food for our growing world. So this is a big deal. Well, what happens now is a lot of farmers and ranchers will spray gibberellic acid on their grass crops early in the spring or late in the fall. We're usually talking about 50, 55 degree temperatures. If, if we're getting that, then hey, that's about the right time where we wanna spray this gibberellic acid. All right, so gibberellic acid is not a chemical. And so you could use it in organic production. You could use it in commercial uh, conventional production. It, it makes no difference. It's not anything that's going to, to make something harmful. As Brian was mentioning, it's just making more food. It's just faster growth earlier in the season. We see a noticeable difference in crops like wheat and corn as well in, in terms of just getting more vegetative growth. And, and that's what guys are going for for a number of reasons. You may say, well, if I'm cutting silage, for example, I want more vegetative growth in my cornfield. Okay, I can get that. But how about weed control? Think about it this way. If your plants got a little taller quicker and they shaded the row, you're gonna conserve moisture loss. You're gonna potentially conserve the soil from erosion if you can get more growth out there to protect the soil uh, from rainfall, for example. And you can shade out those weeds that much sooner. And if the corn crop completely shades out the ground, less weeds will be able to make it through that canopy. So the main reason why we're talking about this today is because chances are, if you're a non-farmer, you've heard over the last 10, 20 years that, oh, farmers are polluting the earth or some other nonsense like that. And what ends up happening today is we as farmers spray a lot of these natural products out there. They already exist in the environment. They're already in the plants even. All we're doing is maybe putting them on at a little bit higher dose or at a certain time in a certain crop in a certain spot. So we as farmers can make a little more money by producing some more food. So that's really all it amounts to. But this gibberellic acid, natural, safe, can be used in organic, and lots of farmers and ranchers use gibberellic acid all around the world. Well, one other thing that you'll see all over and possibly even around your home and yard is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 
Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing time. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. Are you storing grain in your bin from last harvest? You will want to avoid running your bin fans when the air is warm and wet to avoid sprouting and spoilage. The AgriDry Bullseye Controller has the capability to automatically run your fans when the weather conditions are safe for quality grain control. Stop monitoring the weather or babysitting your bins and let the Bullseye Controller keep your grain safe. Visit AgriDryLLC.com to find your local dealer today. For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. Oh, Ed, what are we presenting? That Credenz soybeans are designed using smart genetics. Look, state-of-the-art breeding advances the best germplasm. Plus, tailored varieties for any field conditions with choice in herbicide-tolerant traits. And Credenz soybeans come back by Bayer's ongoing innovation. Want increased yields and ROI? Plant the smarter soybean. Talk to an authorized Credenz retailer or discover the right Credenz variety at credenz.bear.us. Always read and follow label instructions. Technology is constantly changing the way we farm. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies are here to keep your farm at the forefront of agricultural innovation. With spray application equipment for any scenario, Hypro is here to put you right on technology, right on target. One of the most important things you need to look at in your soil is potassium. But it's also sodium, and it's also hydrogen. Well, you know what? There is a test you can run that will show you the ratio of one nutrient to the others, and also calcium magnesium. This is called the base saturation test. We want to explain just part of this base saturation test today and why it's so important for your farm. When you're running soil tests on your farm this fall, or, or any time that you're running soil tests, one of the tests that you should be requesting is the base saturation test. Now at some labs, it's on their base package uh, when you just say, hey, I'm sending in a soil sample, give me some results. They'll include that base saturation because they see it's so important. They don't even want to give you a choice of if you should have it on there or not. Other labs, you have to specifically ask for base saturation to make sure that they include it. So why is this so important and what is it a measure of? When we look at, at the base saturation on a soil, we're looking at the positively charged nutrients that are hooking up to the soil colloids. Now with soil, it has a negative electrical charge. So positively charged nutrients are going to attract to it. Things like the potassium, like the sodium, like the hydrogen that we were talking about. So when you're looking at the base saturation test, what you're seeing is a ratio of these positively charged nutrients or which percentage of the binding sites on the soil colloids are held by each of the nutrients. So next week on the show, we'll talk about calcium and magnesium. Those are two really big components of this base saturation. But today we want to focus on potassium, sodium, and hydrogen. Well, to begin with, with sodium, what we're looking for is we want that to be less than 1%. What we're talking about here is not necessarily parts per million, okay? Because sometimes people say, well, if you have below this many parts per million, you're fine. Well, not necessarily. We're looking at as a total percentage in the soil, if sodium is less than 1% of these five nutrients, 
then we're usually in pretty good shape. When we see that sodium level climb above 1%, what that very often means is we have too much sodium in the soil, and it, when we start getting up to really high levels, let's say 8 or 10 or 15% sodium, we've got sodic soils, that's bad. Just remember, sodium uh, ends up becoming salt, and salt kills soil. Salt kills microbes. Salt kills plants. Salt is one of the worst things you can possibly have in the soil. And, you know, it's hard for us as human beings to really, you know, understand that sometimes because what do we do? We put salt on just about everything we eat. Well, a little bit of salt is fine, but you start getting very much salt at all and it's a really bad deal. So keep the sodium less than 1%. One other nutrient we want to keep in relatively low concentrations in the soil is hydrogen. And I realize you may be saying, hydrogen? Well, that's part of water. We definitely need to have some H2O out there. Yes, we do. But when we're looking at base saturation and how much free hydrogen is actually attached to our soil colloids, that's an indication of how much acidity there is in the soil. If you've ever looked at the chemical formulas for sulfuric acid, for example, the first thing you see on there is H2 and then SO4. Well, the SO4 is your, your sulfur and your H2 is the hydrogen, and that's the acid portion. So when we're looking at soils, when we get high levels of hydrogen in our soil, especially when they get above 10% on a base saturation test, we've got an acidic soil that we need to fix. Now, it's an easy fix. Just adding lime to a soil can take care of this. There's a chemical reaction that happens when you add lime, which is calcium carbonate, to a soil that has lots of free hydrogen. Well, the hydrogen binds with one of the oxygens in the carbonate and makes water. So we can get rid of excess hydrogen fairly easy. The big thing though is for all the soil microbes to work and for good nutrient availability within your soil, you have to keep that base saturation hydrogen less than 10%. One quick thing too with hydrogen, it can actually get to zero and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but in most crops we'd like to see that soil pH in the 6.3 to 6.8 range, so we want a little bit of hydrogen. When your soil pH reaches 7 and above, there is zero for a percentage of hydrogen out in that field. So it's nothing to get too alarmed about, but when you see a zero for hydrogen, that's going to tell you that your pH is 7 or above. I don't know of too many farming situations where I see people adding lots of sodium on purpose or adding lots of hydrogen on purpose uh, other than watering their crops. But I do know of almost every situation where farmers are focused on potassium. So potassium in the base saturation test is a real critical thing. The question is, uh, when we're looking at soil tests, do we look at parts per million? Do we look at base saturation? And what levels are we targeting for our crops? All right, you can sure look at parts per million, and that's fine if you've got a really light soil. But in most cases, we're just focused on that base saturation test. We want to see, for most crops, this is not all crops, but for most crops, we want to see 4% to 8% base saturation K. If you're in that range, you're usually in pretty good shape. One of the problems in a lot of the Midwest is you'll see 1%, 1.5%, maybe 2% base saturation K. That's a real problem. And then what that leads to, when you don't have enough K in the soil, you've got more lodging problems, you have uh, just overall stock quality issues, grain quality issues, you see more disease, you just have more overall problems with that crop, and you're disappointed in yield. So this is one of the big things we've been doing on our own farm, is trying to work that soil test base saturation K up over 4%. And to be quite honest with you, we're at 4% now in a lot of our fields, and we're now going for the next level. We've gotten some really good yields. Now I want really great yields. So now we're going to start our progression moving up to 6% base saturation K. You just don't want to get over 8%. Once you start getting over 8%, then that actually can be a limiting factor too. You have problems with other nutrients, a number of other issues. So 4 to 8%, like for corn, soybeans, and wheat, that's the ideal range we're shooting for with potassium. The real key with base saturation is we want to see plenty of it out there because there are points in a crop's life where it has to have rapid growth and it needs to be able to pull lots of potassium quickly. Yep. That's why this ratio is so critical to look at. Yeah, and actually soybeans might need more than corn on any given day late in the summer. Okay, so the big question we get is, all right, my base saturation K is too low, how do I raise it up? Well, the only way you raise it up is putting on more potassium. 
in our own operation, we put potassium on in a number of different ways, whether it's manure, potash, liquid potassium. I mean, there are a lot of things you can do, but just understand it's going to take a lot of pounds in many cases to raise a base saturation one or two or three points. Well, fertility is certainly critical if you want to reach high yields and profitability on your farm, but so is weed control. That's absolutely critical that you stop this week's Weed of the Week. We'll show you how later in the show. At Fisher Tradition Farms, we varus all of our acres, and any new additional acres are automatically varused. Varus maps allow us to know exactly where our soil types change and how much they change. We use AgriLiquids Enhance High Energy N and Access that allows us to add sulfur. We can customize our AgriLiquid products on a per pound, per acre basis as needed. Farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Compaction created during planting leaves thousands of dollars of potential yield in your fields. Copperhead Ag has developed the Furrow Cruiser Spiked Closing Wheel to close the seed trench more effectively. With a unique combination of closing power and control, the Furrow Cruiser provides earlier, more even emergence and higher stand counts, returning yield potential and putting profit back in your pocket. For more information on why you should never run a traditional closing system again, visit CopperheadAG.com. We had super dry conditions right at the end of the fall, probably some uh, dryest corn we've harvested. Head shell was almost nil, very minimal. We were down to a kernel or less per square foot with this head, and normally we, we thought we were doing good keeping down to that three kernels per square feet with our previous head, whether the corn's worth three bucks, six bucks, or eight bucks a bushel. Definitely, definitely puts more money in our pocket at the end of the day. I would recommend Morton for many reasons, but one is that they have a long history of standing behind their buildings. Our sales experience with Morton was a nice experience. You know, they told us what it was going to cost, what it was going to be, you know, how it was going to run, and uh, it worked out really well for us. Morton has built me one heck of a nice building, and it should stand for a very, very long time. I was very happy with the workmanship. Check us out online at mortonbuildings.com. Harvest loss is an incredibly big issue, but you know what? There are some topics that we do on the show here, and if you're a very experienced farmer, you're like, yeah, no kidding, harvest loss is a big deal, and boy, I've heard this a million times, but you know what? Sometimes we get so busy in the fall, we just say, oh, I gotta go, I gotta get this done, rain's coming, snow's coming. Um, we just don't take the time, and so that's one of the main reasons why we're talking about this today, just make sure you're taking the time during harvest to take a look at harvest loss and then if you do have any if there's anything going on you got to look at how am i going to prevent that from happening again next year all right here's the big thing like brian mentioned we just get in such a rush at harvest that man we got to go we got to go we got to go and we're, we're thinking about the big picture of i got to get all this crop off the field and into my bin and what we forget about is when we're dropping a few kernels how many dollars that really adds up to uh, because of that, uh, along with Case IH, we developed the Ag PhD Harvest Loss app. Uh, it's a free download and it's really simple to use. When you're in a crop like corn, for example, if you put in a number like, well, I'm finding four kernels on the ground per square foot, how much does that add up to? Well, you just program in whatever the price of corn is, maybe it's $3.50 a bushel, and boom, you see, wow, I'm losing a couple of bushels per acre here and that's adding up to a lot of dollars per acre as well. What we did on our farm is just made a few little squares, one foot squares, with PVC pipe. It was no big deal, we did that in the off season. So then any of our guys could walk out there, just throw that square down, measure out, real quickly what we're having for harvest loss. Now the big thing is you can have a number of different types of harvest loss. So you want to take a look at the field before you harvest or just step out of the combine, look at stuff you haven't harvested 
Is there anything on the ground? Uh, then is it a header loss? I mean, just back up your combine a little bit, see if it's the head. Or otherwise, you have to look behind the combine and see where is this whole issue coming from. Identify where your problem is. If it's out in the field ahead of time, you know what? That's frustrating because there's nothing you can do right now. You've already lost that yield. We just talked about potassium a little bit earlier. That's a big thing. If you want better standability for next year, less harvest loss, get your potassium levels up. But there are a number of other things, obviously, you can do as well. Okay, the big thing to remember is it only takes about two kernels of corn per square foot to equal a bushel of yield loss. With soybeans, it takes about four soybeans per square foot to equal a bushel yield loss. That's one four bean pod. That's not very many. And then you look at wheat, it takes about 16 kernels of wheat to equal one bushel of yield loss. And we're bringing this up today because I know you've heard it a million times, but all I can tell you is there is still such tremendous harvest loss all around the country. We really want you to watch that with your harvest this year. You know, the other thing we should add into the harvest loss calculator, Brian, is how much it's gonna to cost to control that volunteer grain the next year, because you've got another herbicide expense to try and clean up what your mistake was from this year. Well, one other thing you'll be out there spraying those herbicides for is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this one coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our Weed of the Week is Lady's Thumb. Well, Lady's Thumb Smart Weed. And whenever we say Smart Weed, a lot of farmers that I talk to say, well, that's Pennsylvania Smart Weed, right? Okay, hold on. There are three different types of smartweed that we primarily face in crop production. The first one is swamp smartweed. That's a perennial weed. It's very hairy. That's the distinguishing factor versus Pennsylvania or ladies thumb. Then we've got Pennsylvania smartweed. That is an annual weed, smooth leaves and stems, uh, easy to tell apart from swamp smartweed. The way you can tell it apart from ladies thumb, which is also smooth, is by looking at the leaves. With Pennsylvania smartweed, the leaves are green. With ladies thumb smartweed, the leaves are green, but they have a purple colored thumbprint on them for lack of a better term. So they've got a little blotch of purple on every leaf. When you see that, you're looking at ladies thumb. All right, well, I don't care if you can identify it or not. If you, you think, oh, it's Pennsylvania or it's ladies thumb, control methods are really the same. So what are you gonna do? Let's start with corn. Well, in corn, I really like verdict down, triple flex, sure start. Those have been good products as well, and the new Resicor is awfully good too. Post-emerge, if it was me, I'd go status, but there are many different products that have pretty good effectiveness on Smartweed. How about in soybeans, start with the pre? Well, in soybeans, the three pre approach that we're using to stop ragweed and pigweed and some of these tough roundup resistant weeds works very well on Smartweed as well. So that'd be using a yellow Treflan, Sonalan, or Prowl, Metribuzin, and then either Valor or Authority for a PPO. Post-emerge in soybeans, Roundup and Liberty are both highly effective, as is Dic Camba herbicide for Roundup Ready to extend soybeans going forward as that's labeled. All right, wheat real quick. Well, in wheat, I like uh, for a pre-emerge herbicide, Sharpen. It also works good in a burn down. Then post-emerge Husky is the best. Addition broad spec and some of the SUs can do a nice job too. All right, well, once again, our Weed of the Week is Lady's Thumb. Make sure you're controlling it on your farm. That's it for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. My soybeans are 100% Liberty Link. I started the Liberty Link approximately six years ago, going with the glyphosate system before that and just noticing that I wasn't getting the control that I really wanted. Started in with the Liberty Link system and it's been very satisfactory. 
Well, the velvet leaf is probably my most hated weed. I'll walk across some field 40 rods to pull a velvet leaf if I know it's there. And when I did spray, there were a lot of velvet leaf out here, and, and I have not found any. And I use a pre on the beans, and we could just come back and clean it up with our Liberty, and it does a good job. If you ever break out of weeds, you know, you may be losing 20 to 30 percent as far as your production goes. Well, looking out across my bean field, I'm seeing that, you know, the weed control has been good. The Liberty Link system, a simply better solution, now backed by the Liberty Weed Control Guarantee, because Liberty is simply better weed control by Bayer. Uh, we have a school and a church nearby. I actually go to the classroom to educate the students about what's going on here on my farm. The system that I have, I tie everything together, no-till, cover crops, we applied AgriLiquid in furrow with our soybeans this year. It seemed like they jumped out of the soil, even though we had the record rainfall. I really feel that I'm feeding my plant on a consistent year-round basis throughout the growing season. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Your farm may be guilty with this too. On our farm, we're always excited to get rolling on harvest and sometimes we're rushed to get it done. When you get rushed, how concerned with compaction are you? Well, today's Iron Talk has a few tips to managing harvest time compaction. There are load limits on roads that everyone has to obey. However, there should be load limits in the field as well. Putting a thousand bushels of grain on a one axle grain cart and then driving it all over the field, that's never a great idea, but it happens all the time. Limiting the weight that you haul at any one one time is a critical step to reducing or eliminating compaction. Then we look at tire inflation and tire selection. It's all about the pounds per square inch you'll be placing on the soil. It seems elementary, but it often gets forgotten about. By reducing the air pressure in your tires, you increase the amount of square inches of that tire that touch the soil, thereby spreading out the weight of your load even more and reducing compaction. Of course, switching to tracks or adding more tires is a big help too. Finally, controlling the traffic patterns in the field makes your job of fixing compacted areas much easier. Brian and I visited a farm many years ago where a farm operator said he tells his seasonal and full-time farm help he'll fire them on the spot if they ever even once turn a tractor around in the middle of his fields. Plan your harvest out. Determine in advance where trucks will be filled and how you plan to get the grain from the combine to the trucks so everyone's on the same page and traffic patterns in the field can be minimized. Yes, harvest may be a little rushed again this year, but you can still manage any lasting impacts from compaction by reducing the weight per axle, managing tire inflation and selection, and controlling traffic patterns. That's all our time for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields in your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's our time for today, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. It's on Sirius XM channel 147 each weekday at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. A healthy soil helps to keep our air and water clean while providing a medium for productive crops, pastures, and shelter belts. It takes good management practices and care to accomplish this. To learn more about how farmers are improving the health of their soils, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.